Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are all having a blessed week. We're uh, we're in here in the office today because it's uh, cold outside. We got the garbage men going to and fro, and the neighbors' dogs are barking at some cat on the fence or something. Well, listen. I wanted to talk to you today about possessions, and I wanted to talk to you about some of the 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 greatest possessions that I have ever owned. You know, I got a, I got a model out in my garage. Uh, some of you have seen it. Uh, I'll try to put a little clip of it at the end of this video. And when I was young, my dad owned a shop in Belmont, California. It's still there to this day, still has our family name on it. But uh, it was awesome. I mean, this shop, I had everything at my disposal, everything. I mean, he had a great big sun machine, you know, a diagnostic machine. I had hoist that I could lift the car up, uh, lays. I had everything automotive at my fingertips to main, ma maintain my cars. Well, listen, first one, when I was 19 years old, I bought a 1965 GTO. Had 17,000 miles on the speedometer when I got it. It was a 389 with three deuces, a uh, Hearst four-speed, it was the fastest car I ever owned. And to turn a 19-year-old kid loose in that car, listen, that car, it was absolutely, it was the greatest thing I ever owned at the time. I loved it. I never lost a single race in that car except one. I was racing a guy that had an SS396 Chevelle, 375 horse, and uh, I missed second gear. I lost the race, not the car. And at the same time, I also had a 1967 Camaro with a 327, and that was also that was a great car. That was my dependable car that got fairly decent gas mileage. I drove it cross country; it was a great car. But uh, you know what? I finally got tired of both of them, and I sold them. And then after that, I bought my first motocross bike. And it was a Suzuki TM125. And this was one of the fastest 125 motocross bikes at the time. I used to love that bike. Me and my friends would go out on the motocross track and just tear it up. Uh, that thing would just, it would just bring the front wheel up in any gear. It was a great, great motocross bike. And eventually, I got tired of it and I sold it. Then in 1978, I bought a Pontiac Trans Am. It had a 403 in it with a shaker hood. It was an automatic, but listen, that was the best road car I ever owned. Best handling car I've ever owned. Quiet, I mean, you could just get in it and just drive for a thousand miles. Best road car I ever owned. And it got decent gas mileage. It's got about 18, 19 miles a gallon. But eventually, I got tired of it and I sold it. And then in 1981, I bought a Kawasaki KZ750, brand new right out the door. That was the fastest street bike I ever owned. I never lost a race on that bike, never. I even won races when I had a passenger on the back. But that was the fastest bike I've ever owned. And eventually, I got tired of it and I sold it. Matter of fact, I traded it in on a 1985 Harley Davidson Wide Glide. Brand new, drove it right off the showroom floor. That Harley Davidson Wide Glide was the baddest bike I ever owned. Coolest bike ever. And listen to this that Harley Davidson, that was the first thing I ever owned or bought that came with a spirit attached. And if you don't believe me, ask anyone who rides a Harley Davidson. They will tell you that product comes with a spirit. It comes with a spirit of pride, a spirit of arrogance, everything you can name. It comes with that bike. After that, I bought a 1988 Harley Davidson 1200 Sportster. I love that bike. It was just, it was a dream. It was the fastest Harley I ever owned, best handling, light, nimble. It was just a great bike. 
and eventually I got tired of it and I sold it. The next thing I did was I built that yellow Harley that you see on my uh, on my channel and I wanted to build a show bike and I built that bike from the ground up from the ground up every nut and bolt welded all the brackets on the frame I mean I built that bike myself and it was a show bike and eventually I got tired of it and I sold it and the guy I sold it to he entered a a motorcycle contest in Fresno and he won <laughs> so anyway after that probably one of my greatest possessions was my house in Antelope and that was the house we had before this one I used to shoot a lot of videos over there but listen when I got that house it was in an upscale neighborhood it was a five bedroom house but the fifth bedroom was the master bedroom and what they did was they took two bedrooms and they made one great big master suite I mean it the bedroom it had a fireplace in the bedroom totally cool I put in a pool with a slide spa I mean greatest house I ever owned I just loved it but eventually I got tired of maintaining it I got to where I couldn't maintain it I couldn't get up on the roof I couldn't paint I couldn't do anything it was just it was too big and I couldn't maintain it so I got tired of it and I sold it you guys remember that U2 song I still haven't found what I'm looking for people you can have all the possessions in the world everything this world has to offer but it will never fill the empty hole that is inside a human being and by the way, I love that song. I, I listened to it probably two or three times this week. You know, one day the Apostle Peter, he found exactly what he was looking for. And Jesus had just finished giving his I am the bread of life sermon. And we pick it up in John 6, 66. From that time on, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you go away also? And Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Lord, where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. And we are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them and said, Have I not chosen you twelve, but one of you is a devil? He spoke to them of Judas Iscariot, who would later betray him. People, listen. There's only one thing in this earth that matters. There's only one thing that's going to fill the empty hole that's inside you. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And always remember this. Every single thing is going to burn you know my brother-in-law he has a really nice new Camaro it's a convertible I mean it this this is a bad car it's totally cool and he told me one day he said you know what he said I'd like to keep this my entire life uh, I think it'll become a good collector's item <laughs> and I'll be able to sell it for a lot of money one day and I said listen dude I said, that's not like my classic cars. They were all metal. This thing is all plastic. I said, in 50 years, it'll be all deteriorated. The only thing left will be the body and the shell. That's it. It's all plastic. It's not going to last. Guys, listen. Every single thing on this earth, every classic car, every classic motorcycle, every piece of jewelry, every house, everything it's all going to burn there's not going to be one single thing left nothing it's all going to burn there's only one thing that matters and that is for you to put your faith your trust and your hope in the shed blood that Jesus shed on the cross to pay your sin debt he is the only ticket off this earth, the only one, nothing else.
matters. And those who don't put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, just like every material thing on this, on this earth, it's all going to burn. Anyhow, I just want to give you something to think about. Heaven or hell, you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.